Hi, everyone. Uh, how was everybody's lunch? Great. See after, I see we have that little dip there right after, uh, right after our meal here. Um, I, I wanted to take a little survey here. So how many people here have used Krita before? Okay, about three or four. And uh, so, and how, how many folks here are uh, current users of GIMP? Okay. Good, good. About half of the room. And uh, uh, commercial applications, like say Photoshop. Okay, about three or four, three or four. Well, I hope I can share with you some of the things I've learned uh, through the last few months about Krita. So I'm very glad to see you here. And so let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, first off, I'm a uh, I'm currently a STEM teacher, a science, technology, engineering, math teacher over at Sylvan Learning, uh, providing training to elementary school students uh, from kindergartners all the way to sixth grade students. So a lot of times what we do is we show students at these ages how to use uh, painting apps. And because I work with uh, elementary schools, because of uh, funding issues and things, uh, Krita is a, a way to introduce kids on how to, uh, how to paint. So we'll talk about what is Krita or Krita. Maybe we'll talk about the pronunciation as well, the history behind it, some installation tips, uh, basic concepts, and uh, possibly if we have some additional time, a demo. So let's get going here. So this workshop is an introductory level for Krita, so, uh, any, but we're trying to cover various topics that might be of interest to both beginning users as well as advanced users. And I just wanted to point out that I am an engineer with basic art skills, so you might see a little bit of that. I'm not exactly a Van Gogh, but, um, but I'll definitely show you if you are, if you are um, top-notch artists, what types of techniques that people at at that level are currently using. So the pronunciation, a lot of it has been anecdotal. I've been trying to Google to see what I could find about Krita. I've seen Quita. I've seen Krita. So you can kind of pick your own. It looks like the very top one is the one that the main, uh, the the person who, uh, the people who have set it up, that's the way that they pronounce it. But that looked anecdotal. I didn't see an exact source on that. So, so Krita is a digital painting program, and so you can use it for pixel art. You can edit photos. You can create web banners. You can do some retouching of photos. Let's say someone. Let's say someone is frowning, you can change their frown into a smile. Uh, you can do some color corrections, things like that. A brief history of Krita. Back in 1998, uh, someone, created, someone created a fork on GIMP, which proved a little controversial. And so what they started to do is that spun off as K offices, K image. So in case you're wondering why the K is on my slides here. Krita was originally part of the KDE section. But don't worry, however, because Krita does run on GNOME systems, and I've uh, tested that a little. There are a few wrinkles, though. So I do forewarn you that if you find some things not quite working right, maybe try a parallel installation on the GNOME, uh, on the KDE uh, workspace. From that, Around 2002, it was renamed to Krita to avoid potential trademark infringements. Development ramped up, and originally there was talk of Krita being sort of Photoshop-like, sort of GIMP-like, but then over time it developed into an app for digital painting. However, you'll, you will find that there is a lot of overlap between this, among this app and the other apps that we've discussed. So some of the comparisons that you'll see on the board here are Krita is open source, 
Photoshop is commercial, so you have to pay for something on the cloud. You can do digital painting in Krita and image editing. Photoshop, you can do image editing, painting there as well. There are many types of brush engines. You have the color to alpha filter, which allows you to uh, recolor. Se various blend modes, I was pretty surprised. We'll we'll only be covering a subset of those because there's so much experimentation that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, drawing assistance, multi-brushes, th those are features I haven't found yet in Photoshop and uh, layer styles, they're called layer effects in Photoshop if you're used to that. For GIMP, both, both programs are open source. You have Krita covering drawing, painting, photo editing. GIMP, you can do some photo editing. You can do a little bit of painting here and there. Text tool is a little quirky. GIMP's text tool is a little quirky too. I found the operation could, could be improved over there. Brushes are identifiable or previewable if you uh, mouse over them in Krita, whereas for GIMP, a lot of times you're, you're moving your mouse to the, to the paintbrush and you're trying to figure out, okay, so what is this? And there's a thing called the pop-up palette in Krita and GIMP, it's either not implemented or I haven't seen something quite like it yet. So a, lot, a frequently asked question for me is, which of these applications should you use? I say try them all. I, there is quite a bit of difference among these apps such that you may find one app more usable than the other app and vice versa. As, as you'll see in some upcoming slides, there are things like multi-brushes which are very useful for folks. In terms of installing, what, what, I, what I generally use is the Fedora Design Suite Spin, which is at this link and the slides are online. We'll, they'll also be uh, posted after this presentation. You can also perform a DNF install Calligra Krita to add just Krita. There is a distribution called Chakra which completely imp implements Krita, but the distribution is a little tricky to set up. If you have a different distribution like Ubuntu or various others, you can install using either Yum or DNF or whatever flavor, um, what, whatever flavor installer you have. And the latest and greatest, you can, if you like hacking away, you can try building it from scratch. For Mac, what's recommended is to turn, uh, to turn OpenGL support off because it's a little bit tenuous at this time. People are currently working on it and there is, there is the hope that if there are other Mac developers out there that they can assist with that issue. For PCs, you install as you normally do using, using that operating system's installation. And for Linux, try testing with different workspaces, uh, including KDE. So for a walkthrough on Fedora, I've outlined it here. You basically perform a DNF update, you install Caligra, Krita or Caligra if you want the full entire suite. And then as a root privilege user, if you would like to include KDE, you perform the additional steps and then perform a Krita as a regular user. So here's the user interface. And um, at the very top, uh, the link, excuse me, the link below is uh, details the various things that we're about to discuss, but I wanted to include it there so that way when you try this out at home, you, you have a chance to survey the Krita interface. Which, what you can do is you can right click and you then have access to the pop-up palette. And if you notice, these types of swatches here give you a gamut of colors and then these types of swatches here are swatches that you are, you are presently uh, accessing and in your picture. So you can go back to colors that you previously, pre previously used 
And these tools over here are part of your defaults, but you can, you can configure these. And we'll be showing in an upcoming slide how to set that up. So if you want to view the canvas only, you hit the tab key. A lot of times when people are painting or drawing, they, just, they don't want to look at any of the menus, they just want to look at the, the picture. And so I wanted to include this slide because you just want to look at the canvas and focus on painting and painting only. And what people tend to do when they're working through this is they use the right click of their mouse in order to access the tools so that way they don't have to worry about those additional menus and just focus in drawing. To zoom in and out, it's similar to other applications that you've used. You use the mouse scrolling on your mouse. Um, and also, the menus which are at the top of the screen are the image menu, which affects the entire image. You have the layer menu, which affects the individual layers. You also have the select menu, which affects selections, and we'll be discussing that in a few minutes. You have the filter menu, which applies various filters at your disposal. And this is very similar to other apps that you may have used, GIMP or Photoshop. Tools menu is for macros if you want to begin recording and uh, operations. And also the settings menu. Which, uh, which allows you to configure uh, keyboard shortcuts. The credit tools on the left side, you have the vector tools, the drawing tools, the manipulation tools, the color tools, and the selection tools. So the vector tools include the pointer and text tool. You have various shapes. You have the paintbrush, which is very, very useful. The manipulation tool, which allows you to crop your photo and move things around. And you also have the coloring tools, so you can, you can fill. This is pretty similar to GIMP. And you also have this eyedropper tool in case you need to sample from things off of the web in case you would like to do some color matching. And then various selection tools. The diff as you notice, there are different shapes. So one introductory term for Krita is something called a brush preset. This is, by default, it is on the right side, uh, the right side docker in the second tab. Uh, what you can do is when you click this button here called brush presets, it'll give you an assortment of brushes such as markers, sketching pens, airbrushes and things like that. There, there's such an assortment of these that we can't cover it in this entire hour. And so I leave that for you as a way of experimenting further. To adjust brush size, you would like to press the left bracket key as well as the right bracket key or you can use the shift and drag the left hand, left button of the mouse in order to drag, drag it up and down in order to change the size. And there are these two buttons here for symmetry mode, and that allows you to press the buttons to create axes for reflection. So you can choose a brush size and paint and make snowflakes and jewelry items. So for example, what I did was I took a blue and a purple brush and we have axes of reflection over here as well as over here. And just the simple act of drawing this would creates this on, on the other four sides. There are these things called themes, and you may have seen this in other applications. So if you like to work in the dark, there is Krita Dark. And there's also Krita Bright if you like bright workspaces as well. We also have on the settings menu, you can configure these toolbars to your exact specifications. Do we have any questions so far while I, before I continue? Okay. So the dockers, you can 
click these in and out by simply dragging these boxes on the left hand and right hand side of your screen. And there are buttons on the individual dockers to lock, this, lock these in place. When you're happy with the way you've set it up, you can click on this button here to create the workspace icon and then you type in a new name and this will save your settings. So that way if things get moved around and strange and you'd like to reset back to your workspace, you can go ahead and save that. Wrap around mode is if you like working with uh, tile backgrounds, in a web page, you hit the W key and it allows you to take a look at what, what you're drawing as it looks like in a tiled environment. It's very useful for folks that use that. So for example, this tile that I created here is then shown in, as this, so that way this would be part of some sort of background, let's say. So. To pan the canvas, you hold the wheel, the wheel button of your mouse down, and so that way you can move up and down. You can also hit the space bar and, and mouse around and move the canvas as well. To rotate the canvas, you press control left bracket or control right bracket, or you can use the four, five, and six keys. The four will rotate counterclockwise and six will rotate clockwise, and five will reset back to a regular orientation. And to lighten and darken colors, you can press the L or K uh, keys. For exporting, you hit the file menu and export, and export to either PDF or regular JPEGs, TIFFs, things like that. So let's talk a little about layers. So how, how many folks here have used layers before in either GIMP or Photoshop, okay. So the, it looks like about half of you, let, let's, let's talk a little bit more in terms of thinking of clear sheets of plastic atop of a background. The bottom layer is the background, which is either transparent for those who work on web banners. You, you definitely don't want a, a wider back background showing up, you just want that picture or you want an opaque background if you want a nice little canvas, nice canvas behind that. You can group these layers, such as create a face layer group, which could have eyes, nose, hair, and so on. So the various, the various buttons in, the, in this layers dialog, you have a visibility, you have, which shows, shows whether the layer is displayed or not. You have a lock icon here. A lot of times people will lock their layers down once, once things look perfect because as you're moving around here, if you start accidentally tweaking a layer, it, it, it could turn disastrous. So a lot of people will lock that down. Then you also have the alpha button, which is uh, for transparencies. So if you work with web, web type banners, this is definitely a button to use as well as alpha inheritance as well. You have these buttons here, which, which are layer types of operations. Very similar to Photoshop and GIMP if you've used it before. So just a survey since we have about 50% here, you have adding of a layer. This little button here at, doesn't just add a layer, but you have various choices of layers. So you have transparency layers, filter layers, filter masks, so on and so forth. So wanted to point that out. You also have this button here, which allows you to move, to duplicate a layer, move the layer down, move the layer up, pull it out of a group and put, put it into a group. Layer properties and finally the trash button here, which is to remove the layer. You can also add the layer using the insert key. That's a shortcut that people tend to use a lot from, from uh, an Adobe type product. And also to remove a layer, you can right click and remove the layer when you're in the layer docker. And you can press the control J key. That's a very useful, 
useful button in order to duplicate a layer. So the case study for the sunny day here is that we have our background here, which is a gray canvas. We have a ground layer, which I had created, a vegetation layer, which, which I created using the various brushes there, a sky layer, which is just blue paint, and finally the sun layer. So that's kind of an example of layers if you haven't seen that before. They do add extra complexity, so be sure to save your work first and then flatten the layers if you no longer need the sublayers. Right click that layer and choose flatten image or flatten layer. I caution you to save first because sometimes you do want to go back to a previous version and see what, what the unflattened image layers look like. Do you have a question? When you're operating with layers, mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Because what's happening is each layer takes up, takes up quite a bit of memory as well as space on your hard drive. So as you flatten it, it lacks com less complexity there. Each individual layer you're applying, you could, you could potentially have a lot of filters attached and it just, it's extra stuff for credit to keep track of. Thank you for asking that. So, so how would you create the following three layers? You have, a, you have a bottom canvas, on the middle you have a sketch layer, and then on the top you have an ink layer. And a lot of times what artists will typically do is they'll just we'll, they'll create, create a basic sketch and then on top of that start inking that sketch. So I wanted to ask, who here, what would you do first? Does anyone know who's created layers before? Or Correct. So you would start lower. So when, you're, when, you create a new, when you create a new project, you can have it fill in, fill in the canvas color. And then you can create an additional layer called a sketch layer using this button here, the plus button, or the insert key. And then last, create another layer called an ink layer. To undo and redo, you press Control Z or Control Shift Z to, to redo what you have just undone. And to go into erase mode, if you're not quite happy with how it's turned out, you hit the E key. And any brush or drawing tool can be turned into an eraser. And that's pretty, it sounds trivial, but it's actually not. So, so that's, that's, that's really handy to have. To mirror, a lot of times if you need some, a mirror image of something, you press the M button, and that allows you to get a flopped, image, so, so if you need to get something uh, reoriented correctly, you would do that. There's a mode called stabilizer mode that I wanted to point out uh, to folks using a mouse, because a lot of times when you're drawing on the screen, it looks very jittery and stuff. And so if you, if you haven't purchased a tablet yet, and, and tablet, Wacom tablets definitely work with this, but, but if you're just starting out with a mouse and wanted, to, uh, wanted a nicer feel to it, you have this option of changing the drop-down smoothing from basic smoothing to stabilizer. So definitely look, look out for that. So let's talk a little about foreground and background colors. For folks who've used uh, an Adobe product, you should be very familiar with this. This little box here, this little box here is the foreground color, and this box is the background color. And, and at any time, you can press either this box or this box and change the color of the brush that you're, um, that's currently painting. You have this button here, which allows you to swap the, two for, uh, the foreground color with the background color. And then this button here is, uh, 
resets things to the to default black foreground and default white background. And so this is useful to keep track of because as you are painting, a lot of times you'll, you'll start drawing and then all of a sudden, why, why, is, why is everything showing up white or why can't I see what I'm painting? Well, what you may be, you may find out that you've, you've accidentally swapped these and you're starting to paint white over your, um, over your canvas, which you, you kind of don't want to do. So definitely when you're starting out, uh, try that out. To fill a layer with color, as we were populating those three layers earlier, you hit the backspace key. Um, with the background, to populate with a background color at, at, or shift backspace to, op to fill with a foreground color. And this is great for masked photos, which we may see later. This feature called color history Basically, you have a docker here called the advanced color selector. This should be shown by default, but if it isn't, you can go into the settings menu and display it. And so what it does is as you are painting, it'll keep track of the various colors in your photo that you've used. So if you liked this green swat, this green paint, green color that you've been using, you can go back here and it's recorded that so, so that way you don't have to find that again. Now let's talk a little about brush settings. So the brush settings or the brush presets are the ways for you to change what your photo looks like. You ha as we've discussed previously, you have pencils, brushes, sketch brushes, airbrushes, clone tools, things like that at your disposal. So many, so many. Uh, I've, I've counted at probably about 80 to 100 for you to experiment with. So definitely, definitely try those out. And you click on the tool options, the tool options docker to play around with the various settings. So from the top, you have gradients and fill patterns. Which, are, which you've seen in other graphical applications, perhaps. You have the brush engines and how to, how, to, how to erase. Preserving the alpha, you have the brush sizes and opacity and flow. Opacity determines whether or not you can see through that in, down into the next layers. And also the mirror buttons that we discussed earlier. So for scaling, you, you would like to be sure to scale to a new size under the image menu. And you change to the larger or smaller sizes accordingly. So if you have a photo that seems just a little bit too large, that's, that's the way you would do it. You have blending modes, which are algorithms that describe how colors are mixed together mixed with the other layers. And here is a page that I'll leave for you to experiment later uh, about, uh, about uh, working with these blending modes. The things you have to, uh, the things I'd like to leave with you in terms of blending modes are the popular ones, which are the normal. You have the multiply, which allows you to darken layers. So a lot of times, if I'm handed a photo which is pretty light, like say a photo from um, a relative where the, it's, it's been fading over time, this is a very useful mode for you to use called the multiply mode. It allows you to darken your photos. You can also screen too, so the, oper uh, the opposite operation, if you've received a photo which is way too dark and you need to, need to lighten it up. You, you also have overlay and soft light, which we won't go over now, but I just wanted to leave you with that, that those are two of the more popular ones. You also have a color blending mode, and this is useful for like, say, wedding photos or uh, grisaille grayscale underpaintings. And so just to 
rather than rather than discuss this slide further, let's just go into this picture as an example. So say you have let's say you have a happy bride here and you wanted to show her flower vase here. What what I've done is I've taken I've taken a new layer, created a new layer, I've duplicated it, and then I just changed the color blending mode to color. And then I just painted, carefully painted purple over, over this can. So you've seen that technique used in a lot in wedding photos where the bride is in color and everything else is black and white. This is the way you would do it. You take a photo, make it black and white, and then just color this, color this right in using the color blending mode. So for shapes, you have various shapes, squares, circles, polygons, and polylines, which are similar to polygons, but they're not connected at the end. And you can also transform too, which allows you to distort or adjust your pictures. So a lot of times if you want to squash things, or if you want to make them bigger or smaller but preserve the aspect ratio, what you would use is the shift key as you're dragging, dragging uh, your uh, selections there. And then you have the perspective key, which allows you to control and drag a handle. You have a thing called a perspective transform, which you hit by pressing control T. And when you go to the tools options docker, which is on the right hand side, you choose the perspective or second tool here. And then what you can do is you can drag the objects of the handle uh, of, uh, of the, the handles of the object. So say you have a photo that you would like to apply along the side of a wall, but it's in three dimensional space. It, the wall is uh, perpendicular or off at an angle. This is how you would apply this photo onto that. And so you can see the applications for that because a lot of times if you have like say jewelry or something where you would like to apply a photo at an odd angle, this is the tool to work with. The filter menu works as the filter menu in GIMP or in Adobe products. And there are so many different filters available. The ones I wanted to point out that you might be using a lot um, starting out are the Gaussian blur, which allows you to uh, create a smooth blurring on an image. You can also use the Gaussian blur if you need to, say, say you work with a photo and you want to kind of redact certain things that shouldn't be there. That's one way you can blur the photo out. You also have something called uh, gimmick which is Gracie's magic for image computing. There, are, there seem to be like a hundred or more of these various filters. And you might not be familiar with these, so the ones I want to at least point out for you to experiment are the frames Polaroid and frames uh, fuzzy one. And so let's take a look at that. Here's your, uh, here's, remember our regular photo with our bride here? What we've done is we've just created a Polaroid and one of the options there is for, an, is for uh, adding an angle. So a lot of times pol Polaroids might not be uh, set at a regular angle. So this one here is called Frames Fuzzy. As you can see, uh, the photo on the edges is a little bit fuzzy here. It wasn't like that before, as you can see over here. But there are so many more of those, uh, countless. So I, I encourage you to experiment more and, and take a look at Gimmick. Finally, you have the text tool here, which allows you to add your own, add your signature to your, either your paintings or your photos. And you can apply layer styles to these. And we'll be covering layer styles in a, about a minute or two. Note that you can interleave these vector layers with the raster layers. What are, what are raster layers are the, the paint layers that we've been discussing. So, and you can have multiple layers of this. F to add to your favorite presets or that pop-up palette that I was discussing earlier, 
go to the brush presets docker and then right click on a desired brush preset and choose assign to tag and then you choose favorite preset or any other group and then when you're ready to use that brush preset right click on the canvas and see that your preset has been added so returning back to our example of jewelry or snowflake you have symmetry mode so those two triangular buttons on your at the top of your uh, screen you choose a brush you choose a color you choose a size and then you draw you can also use the multi brush tool which will be on your left hand side choose and re repeat one nice thing about the multi brush is that you can add additional axes on the multi brush so you can have say 13 leaves so over here for example I've changed this to 13 by dragging and mo and moving this up or down accordingly our next case study is the frowning to a, sm to a smile. So our, our friend here, when he had his picture taken, he wasn't, he wasn't smiling very much. And so what we would like to do is maybe, maybe this is the type of photo where you wouldn't exactly like to share it with folks because, you know, you like to cheer them up a little. And so what we've done in terms of this procedure is we've used the transform tool hit control T but you want to then press this button here which looks like a teardrop and this is called the liquify tool so if you've used that tool in other applications like Adobe ones for example this allows you to uh, essentially nip and tuck on, on a photo and the mode you want to choose is build up. It should be selected by default, but I wanted to point that out to you. And for a size, you would choose a good size. And in terms of a good size, I would probably make it around the size of his cheek over here. So like maybe about here. Because what, what the tuck is doing is you you're basically want to grab this section and just tuck a little bit, but not too much because what happens is if you tuck too much then it starts to have this thing that we like to call the joker effect and so his so he's like very smiling smiling very crazily and stuff and you, and you don't want that to happen unless that's your intended effect and then finally another way to do this is to go into tools options or warp you can create anchor points and draw uh, uh, create them, lock them, and then start dragging those points. It's not, uh, it, it's not as clean as, say, Liquify, but I've included this here for you in case you find an application where this works better for you. And, and so you do have a warp tool uh, similar to other graphics products. So our next case is uh, the penguin is looking up and so this particular picture we have this penguin here a great auk and we'd like to basically make him look up a little bit more and maybe and also maybe adjust how his uh, I guess arm or wing is and so what we've done is we use the transform tool control T once again and you pick this tool here which is known as the cage tool which you may find in other apps you might not so um, you draw a cage around the object so what I've done is I've take I started here and then I just started clicking 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 so on and so forth and then I returned back to my first point in order to create 
this, this cage here. And then when I was done, I then took that, this point over here, let's say, and I just started tweaking it up just a little bit. And maybe this point here and tweaking it just a little bit. And so what ends up happening, it's ever so slight, but as you can see, uh, a, diff a different look for, a, a different look from before and after. So folks who like to work on vision boards or collages, you, know, you like to take photos and arrange them, um, or, or vision boards, uh, which I'd highly recommend if, uh, if you don't have one, definitely uh, start a vision board because it's a way to definitely uh, take a look at what, what matters to you and is important in your life. Basically what you do is you create, uh, start a new document and choose a custom size. I typically do like a letter size, but you can, what, what some folks like to do is they like to change the size to a size for, let's say, uh, a background for the desktop. So just find out what the numbers of the pixels are and then, and then do that. And then under the layer menu, choose import, export, import, and choose each picture one by one. And then in the layer tab, you highlight each layer, you hit control T, and then shift click and drag the picture's corner handles and move the layers to an ideal location and then you can optionally rotate these pictures. So as an example, we have these four photos here. And after turning it into a collage, I, with some tweaking, ended up making this collage. I can optionally move this picture to the left here so that way I cut this out. But you, 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 you get the idea from there. One important thing is blemish or debris removal. A lot of times if someone has a blemish on their face that you'd like to remove, perhaps, or perhaps there's some type of dust on a photo, like a dark speck, you'd like to remove it. What you do is you go to your edit, your edit brush settings, which is at the top toolbar that we've discussed previously, you click on the clone brush engine, which is on the left-hand side, and hold down the control key and click on an ideal source, a clean surface with no defects visible. Release the control key and click on the blemish to remove. So for example, for this case study, we, we, we've, we've taken this wrinkle here and what, what I would do is I would sample from her forehead here using the control key and then start painting uh, over on her face here to remove that wrinkle in case that, that's an example you'd like to do. Or if, if the person has a blemish, you can do that too. For a transparency mask, you can use this to create vignettes. And so I've left a procedure here for you to try out and experiment with as well. The instructions are all there. So for layer styles, a lot of times what people would like to do is create a banner for their, a banner for their web page or apply it and maybe apply drop shadows to a headline. So what you do is you create your text box using the text tool and then apply on the layer menu apply a layer style and you use the FX button to view your applied style. So what's missing uh, currently from Krita that, that, I'm, that I've been looking for are snapping to grids or snapping to the rulers. I like some feature that allows me to lock uh, lock my selections to, to the rulers, and some guidelines. 
and also the nudging of layers. But this is scheduled for version 3, so look out for it. And if you like working with uh, apps, one thing you can do to help is develop for Krita at krita.org, get involved. You can learn it and use Krita and teach it and tell others about it and fund Krita development. So, so just to wrap up, use Krita to paint, edit, edit or retouch photos, make web banners, and much more. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the nudging of layers. Can't you make a selection within a layer and move that selection around? Why would you want to move the whole layer? Can you just make a selection of the entire file? Yeah, I mean, you could, you could select the entire photo and move it, but a lot of times, like say for a collage, if you just want to move the individual pictures, you just want to nudge that one photo. You don't want to move, just like, what, just like if you have photos on a light board or uh, on, a, on a canvas, you want to move the individual photos around. So. Are there any other questions? Yes. Okay. Do you have the capability of kind of mapping one to the other, like taking a, a simple like cartoonish raster and going mm -hmm. to vector? Well, okay. So, so your question then, to repeat for the audience, is: Is there a way to take that raster and then uh, and then export it out as a vector or it's something? Hmm. I'm I'm not sure about that. Um, but I, I I can research that for you and and let you know. So so maybe we'll talk about it a little later. Good question though. Sure. So the by the way the online evaluation for this presentation is located here. But this is also part of the slide deck, so if, uh, if you don't have to write this down now, you could take a look at it later. And please feel free to stop by the Fedora table and say hello. I'd like to chat with you. So thank you for attending, and here's some fun stuff. We have keyboard shortcuts. So if you go to this link here, uh, you, can s you can see a graphical representation of all the shortcuts that I've shown you and much more. David Ravoy has a bunch of brushes here that he's created, artistic brushes. And so you can, I'd highly recommend this bundle. Just go to this website and import it into your uh, workflow here. You may need to restart Krita. And what you can then do is you can click on these new brushes that show up and you'll be, you'll be amazed at what, what you can do with this. So for an aging document, let's say, we'll go to Krita, or actually, let's go here. So for the cage example here, so we have we have this penguin here, and we would like to tweak tweak his beak here. So what you would do is you hit Control T, And then what you do is you go into the tool options here, which is on the right-hand side. And here's that liquify tool that I showed you earlier. 
But this, here's also that cage tool. So this is the tool that we would like to, to work with. If you notice, if you notice the background is a little bit uh, kind of off-white, so we may need some cleanup operation a little later, but just to give you the idea of how the cage tool works, is I've, I'll just click around here. And then, and then to start tweaking, you can start moving these up a little more, like that. Maybe, maybe make him a little over here. As you can see, there is a little bit of cleanup that we might need to do later, but we can use the fill tool, color match here, and, and clean that up. So, so there's, there's one example. Another one. Is uh, jewelry or snowflake, as the case may be. So let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that. So you have you have these tools, two symmetry tools here. What that does is it creates these axes for you to draw around in. And then I want to choose a paintbrush. So you click on the paintbrush tool. And then I'm using the bracket keys on my on my keyboard in order to choose to choose a, a brush size. On the right hand side over here, if you follow my mouse, I'm just choosing the color blue. A lot of time a lot of times when you're first starting out, you'll see that the pointer might be over here on white, and no matter what you do, if you start clicking around, you're you're it, 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 it's like I, I I'm I can't see anything. Well you're drawing white on top of a white canvas, so it's just change your color and you're all set. And if you notice, when I clicked here, it then, and I start drawing here, notice that there is a symmetry applied in this photo here. And as I pick different colors, remember, remember that color history on the upper right hand corner? It's keeping track. So I can always go back to that previous color and just continue painting. Similarly, you can use something called a multi brush, which is over here on the left hand side. If I click here, and let's get rid of our symmetry brushes now, because we don't need that. And if I choose an axis angle of, say, I don't know, 10, you can do something like this. So it's like a kaleidoscope of 10 different, uh, 10 different angles, I guess, as the case may be then you can just pick different colors. Any questions on that before we go on? Okay. So that's a, that's a feature that I haven't seen yet in uh, some of the other apps. So if I go to File Open and go to how about blemish removal? Because I'm sure I'm sure folks here would like to see. So what I'm doing is I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in on to zoom in on the affected area. And basically, what you would do 
is you would see me move the mouse over here to uh, edit brush settings. And what I want is the clone tool here. And then when I'm done here, hit escape. And if you notice, the brush is pretty huge. It's like, I don't know, uh, really, really large. And so I want to change the brush size down. So I I'm using the left bracket to reduce the size of the brush. Notice also that you can use, uh, if I press the shift, shift key and use the left mouse button, I can change the size. But I want to make it about the size of, uh, size of the blemish here, or in this case, the wrinkle. And let's see. And what I would like to do is I'd like to sample from this section here. So what I do is I press the control key. And due to an OpenGL fun thing right now, that, that weird pink box is showing up on my screen, but it, it'll hopefully not do that on your screen. So if you press the control key and then just click once in this area, let's see, maybe make it a little smaller here. Hit control. And so this section here will be the sample area. And then what I'll do is if I press here, it'll then clone a portion of this, but mix it in with a layer. So, that, so that's an example of the, the clone tool. Similarly, you can, you can go here maybe and uh, maybe clean that up a little, things like that. So like clone here, over here. Let's see. Do we do we have uh, do we have some more questions or shall I keep going? Um, are there any tools in Chris for uh, assisting with generating uh visual art? Yes. So um if you if you if you Google on YouTube, there is actually a pixel art demonstration. Um there's a there's an initial process in setting it up. I think it's like about 12 to 15 minutes, um, more, um, more, so uh, more um, not for the scope for an intro class, but, there, uh, but if you work with pixel art a lot, uh, it's a very good video. So um, what I can do is uh, I, can, I can help you find that link if you, if you see me at the Fedora table. All right. So um, any other questions? Mm-hmm. Yes, so the slides will be available either on Scale's website or if you go to, let's see, if you write this quickly down, you can get them today or stop by the Fedora table later and I can get you this link. So the, the, the last set of bonus slides, in case you're interested, let's see. So Krita, with, with Krita, you can also, I've left the instructions for you on how to, change, how to make this aging document perhaps look a little better. See, right now it's kind of yellowing, and so what I've done is I've darkened the document using the multiply tool. And I've also replaced the color of this with blue. Obviously, you know, I picked blue arbitrarily, but you can pick whatever color you'd like. I, I, I did the blue just for effect. Um, I've left you a few resources and brushes, um, studies on why people, are, are, uh, uh, why people may be switching from different applications, and uh, some DVDs that you can purchase. Uh, from the Muses group, and a copy of the uh, Krita manual. If you like living on the edge, there is an alpha that just came out recently, like about a week ago. So, so there's, there's a link for that as well. 
And in terms of the photo citations, there you go. So if you have any other questions, I will be at the Fedora table. I'll, I'll be here for probably about five or ten minutes while I close up shop here if you'd like me to m maybe quickly demo something for you. Thank you very much again for um, attending our presentation here at Scale 14X and I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. of what? Like images. Um, it's different. I mean, there are, again, there are, there are different tools at your disposal. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation, try the tool out, see if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, you know, it's like a, a, not a question of what's better or not. I've, I've, I know some people who will use both GIMP and both Krita, so, you know, but it's, 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 it's an alternative, so, all right? Thank you for asking. Can I get the link to the slides again? Sure, I will go back to slide number one. Yeah, and, and yeah. yeah. so go ahead and, if you want, take a picture of that now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I, what I found with the text tool is it's a little, um, it, it's a little quirky. Uh, like what I found is when I first set up text, it will show up like really, really large, and then I have to dial down the font size. So it could, but it could how use a little work. Text is there. I can't figure out how to change it. Oh, like how to change the layer style or something like that? No, or? just like the font size. Right? So see, oh. Once it's there. Oh, okay. You can't do anything other than change the letter. Okay, so what I do in that particular case, let's see, let's see, say so if I click on the text tool here, okay, so then I click, click inside here, and I start changing the size over here in the tools, the tool options here, which is on the right-hand side here. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to highlight the text, and then you start. Oh, so what I did was I clicked between the R and the T in Artist, and then just start dialing it down. No, no, but I mean, how did you get it to highlight? Oh, uh, I hit Control A. Oh. Yeah. Okay. For select all. You don't have to select all, because the, the thing with Krita is it allows you to select just individual characters. Well, I couldn't figure out how yeah. to do it with the mouse. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Control-A. Okay. Yeah. Work. yeah, so you have to click in, uh, click in to get your mouse in there, and then you hit Control-A to highlight everything, and then, and so then you start adjusting down. Just select a couple letters, then. Yeah. One other question. I wasn't really paying attention. But how uh -huh. did you get to the uh, clone tool and the other two? Okay, so to get to the clone tool, click on brush to activate the brushes, and then you click here and edit brush settings, and then here's okay. the clone tool. However, DVOD here, if you go into the brush presets, see so and notice the stock brushes are everything except for DVODs. If you click on DVOD here, his brushes, one of the, oh, interesting. I'm wondering where that worked. Okay. One of his one of his tools is a clone tool that you can also use. So let's see. Oh, here we go. And if you click there, 
notice how notice how it has a clone tool if you hit control uh, the control button it'll sample and then you can start sampling from that of course I'm sampling from nothing right now so that's that's kind of pointless but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so have you ever played with the pick paint tool soft no I haven't kind of funky the fact that you could have vector base layers Oh. Kind of okay. Now that one unfortunately is commercial. You have to run under one. Okay. If you oh. ever decide to do that, that would be an amazing addition. P Paint tool. Sai. S A I. S A I. Okay. Yeah. I'll look for it. There's a lot of the manga and other cartoons. Mm.